Our next session will be a really interesting one. So the VCSP program started in 2017 with a pilot program. Now we will hear from four of the past volunteer community surveyors who were part of this 2017 pilot program. They'll talk about their experiences and some of the opportunities that they have found for humanitarian surveyors, introducing Sandy Chari, Shristi Podell, Chandan Das, and Adama Sa. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rosni. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good to be here and excited too. Um, my name is Tandy Nkosi and I'm from Zimbabwe. And so I'm just going to pull up my PowerPoint presentation uh, for you. Um, uh, there. Uh, can we all see it? Um, yes. Are you able to please go into presenter mode, Dandy? Uh, sure. Okay, no? Fantastic, thank you. Okay, so I'm just going to switch off my video so that you can hear me perfectly. Uh, my audio can play very well. Okay, so I studied at the Midland State University uh, in Zimbabwe and I went on to complete a postgraduate diploma in project management in 2015. And then in 2013, I received a FIG grant to attend the FIG Working Week, which was to be held in Abuja, uh, Nigeria. And during this working week, I got trained on the STDM and its various applications. And then in 2017, when the VCS program was initiated. I was selected to be part of the first team of volunteers. I currently serve as the deputy president of the Zimbabwe Institute of Geomatics in Zimbabwe. And um, I was deployed uh, to participate in the program uh, in Zambia. So just some quick facts about Zambia. Zambia has uh, 37 informal settlement areas. And as of 2021, the Zambian population was estimated to be around 18.7 million. And a 2018 report by the International Labor Organization highlights that about 70% of this population is resident in these informal settlements. And this situation leads to pressure on urban infrastructure and also on the need for land and tenure security. And for my volunteer uh, participation, I was going to be working in Kanyama. So of the 37 informal settlements that I spoke about earlier on, Kanyama is the largest of them all. And it is also the most densely populated of these informal settlements. <clears throat> this area, as you can see from the image, this area is characterized by poor drainage systems, poor road connection networks, and also lack of access to clean water. All these challenges make uh, the residents susceptible to disease outbreaks such as cholera, and um, typhoid. And um, therefore, um, in partnership uh, with the UN Habitats and also the GLTN, 
the Lusaka City Council initiated the Support to Occupants Licenses project. Uh, this project was aimed at um, enhancing security of tenure for the residents within Kanyama and also to just help provide basic infrastructure and services. Uh, this would help the residents to get access to decent and also affordable housing and basic services. As a volunteer community surveyor, my overall role uh, was to ensure that um, the survey and mapping process was done well. Um, in this slide, as you'll see, I've just uh, highlighted all my roles, but um, <clears throat> I was also involved in making sure that uh, the data captured in the field was accurate. And uh, the data captured in the field included uh, uh, the coordinates of the housing structure, the name of the household owner, the water source available, and whether or not the house had uh, access to sanitation services, such as a clean toilet and everything else. I was also tasked with the responsibility of training the department in terms on the use and application of the STDN. What were the results of uh, this project? So in 2018, um, the residents of Kanyama were finally granted their uh, occupancy licenses. Um, by December 2018, data on about 12,000 properties had been collected. So this data helped to get some of the residents to finally get occupancy licenses and also to give them rights to their dwelling for a period of 30 years. Um, these licenses are also renewable, so that is what's good about them as well. <clears throat> so the lessons that I learned from this experience as a VCS is that the overall lesson that I learned is that you should take every learning opportunity seriously because um, I got trained on the use of STGM yeah. in 2013. And from 2013 onwards, I kept myself up to date with improvements that were being done on the STDM, the software and everything else. And so this helped me because in 2017, when I was selected to then participate in the program, I still had the skills on my fingertips and I still knew how to apply uh, the lessons that I'd learned in the field. And uh, the other lessons that I learned are that you should always carry out your work with the highest um, standards of accuracy. This is because as a surveyor, huge decisions to be made in processes such as land administration depend on the results from your field work. And it is therefore important to make sure that your work has been done with precision and accuracy. Um, the other lesson that I learned is that you should be ready to think out of outside the box. Uh, during our field work and our office work, we realized that when we tried to upload the GPX files, the files, um, the, the parcels from the files didn't match what was on the ground. And therefore we made a try and we used uh, the mobile topographer application, which I had on my phone and it matched exactly what was on the ground. So you always need to be ready to think outside the box. And the other uh, lesson is that you should be ready to ask for help whenever you need it. During my office work, I faced a, a difficult situation with the STDM uh, software and I reached out to Paul Gathogo and he gave me a detailed description of how to handle the problem that I was facing and I was able to rectify it. So always be humble and ask for help when you need it. And also, it's also important to embrace the culture of the people that you'll be working in so that you'll be able to work well and this will make your volunteering experience much easier and memorable. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandy. Welcoming Shristi Podell.
Hello, I hope you can hear me. Yes, indeed we can. Okay. Um, hello everyone, my name is Srishti Paudel. Um, so I'm sharing my screen here. Um, so, can you see my screen? Yes. Would you mind just going into presenter mode, please? Uh, yeah. Is it okay now? Um, well, I'm turning off my video to make my voice clear. Um, so is it good now? Shall I start? Perfect. Okay. Um, so hello everyone. Warm namaste. Uh, at first I'd like to thank the VCSP team as well as FIG Young Surveyors Network for providing me this amazing platform to share my experiences uh, as a volunteer in the VCSP program. Uh, I have very little time, so without further delay, I'd like to move on with my presentation. Giving a little introduction about myself, I am a geomatics engineer from Nepal. Currently, I'm working as a survey officer in government of Nepal, where I'm uh, leading a team of survey professionals handling, handling cadastral activities in survey office of Jajarkot for nearly two years now. I have worked as a land information system associate in UN Habitat in 2018. And I was a volunteer in VCSP program for Dolakha Nepal, where I volunteered for nearly a month. Giving a, an outline of my presentation, it's divided into four sections. At first, I'll talk about the project where I volunteer, then my roles as a VCS, the benefits the program had on me as well as my fellow volunteers, and a summary slide. So about STDM project in Dolatha, it was a post-earthquake rehabilitation project. Uh, many might know that Nepal was hit by a massive earthquake of 7.8 magnitude in 2015, and millions of houses were destroyed, and people were living in temporary houses like these. So uh, Dolatha was among the most affected areas, and STDM was used there. Uh, in different locations with uh, mainly three objectives. Firstly, for helping the communities that were displaced by earthquake-induced landslide to find a new location for resettlement. Second, for helping the informal settlers in getting reconstruction grant from the government for building their houses. And lastly, for helping some communities to make an integrated settlement plan for rebuilding their houses in a more sustainable manner. It was uh, an effort of multiple agencies. Uh, there were three international and a national organization involved, and the project was carried out in different stages, and volunteers were deployed uh, for helping in last three stages of the project, that is for data collection, data entry and management in STDM, and data validation tasks. So uh, what were my responsibilities as a volunteer? Well, what I have, real what I have realized is that uh, VCSP gives you opportunity to explore the things that you enjoy and contribute in any possible ways you can. So uh, you could do a lot of activities, uh, for instance, connecting with the local communities, either by going into the field for data collection or helping the locals in using geospatial technologies such as QGIS and GPS. You could also help local partners to build STDM database, which involve more technical steps such as georeferencing of satellite imageries that were collected in the field and uh, digitizing them for creating database containing social tenure relationships that is house data, family data, and data of farm boundaries. So 
uh, you could also get involved into uh, helping the team in data analysis and validation tasks uh, by participating in meetings like these. So uh, was this it? Uh, just some serious professional stuff? No, obviously not. Because VCSP was actually a full package of uh, networking, learning, and fun. So there were other activities too. For instance, some barbecue nights or hikes to, to some wonderful heights. There were moments for being with nature without thinking much. Or uh, some dance performances giving a cultural touch. So yeah, it was an opportunity to gain beautiful memories for life. So uh, what were the benefits of the VCSP program? Well, uh, VCSP can open door to new opportunities. Uh, um, it can lead you to new role and leadership. Uh, Talking about me, I was hired by UN Habitat for another SGDM project after my VCSP experience. And this is me uh, in my new workplace. It can also lead you to some outreach and exposure. Well, this is me participating on a training on land tools and SGDM after my VCSP experience. Or can also lead you to some more outreach and exposure. This is again me giving a presentation about STDM initiatives in Nepal in FIG Young Surveyors Network Asian Pacific meeting held in Tokyo in 2018. And you never know, it can also lead you to some wonderful smiles like this and some funny memories like this. And if you look at it from other perspective, it can also help you to build lifelong relationships. Well, this is me and another volunteer for Nepal, Jordan. He's from New Zealand. And in this picture, we are in my house in Pokhara, where he and I were tied into a brother-sister relationship through a ritual in Tihar festival. And uh, if you look uh, in depth, VCSP can also give you some moments to explore your strengths, maybe like this. This is brave Zodan again lifting a big pile of hay in my village in Pokhara. So, uh, to conclude, VCSP, it is not just about contributions, it's rewarding to both the communities that we serve as well as the young surveyors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rishti. That was beautiful. Welcoming our next VCS, Chandan Das. Are you just on mute, Chandan? Can you, uh, okay, uh, is my voice audible now? Yes, it's great. Thank you. So this is me, Chandan Das, and I'm from Nepal, much like Swisti. Uh, and without any further delay, I'd like to share my presentation. So there it goes. It might just be on the way. So, is my screen showing up? Shall I go in presentation mode? Yes, please do. Thank you. Thank you, Roshni. Okay. So, uh, I was a voluntary surveyor in 2016, and that is why I'm here. And it is uh, really phenomenal to see uh, so many surveyors, and I can see more than 100 participants uh, uh, reaching to 125 uh, by now. And I should say, like, uh, so Young Service Network is a phenomenal network of young surveyors with uh, more than 11,000 uh, uh, Facebook group members and uh, uh, more, uh, ever increasing followers and uh, community members in this. 
and I would like to go to uh, my bio, the next slide. So this is uh, me and I am a surveyor and I'm also a geomatics engineer. And my current job is a survey officer at government of Nepal. And uh, talking about VCSP uh, program, I was a, a voluntary surveyor, a VCSP volunteer in Philippines uh, in 2016. And uh, I'm also a founding member of uh, Nepal Geomatics Engineering Society that is uh, equivalent to Young Surveyors Network in Nepal. So this is uh, below, you can see the map of Nepal uh, in the beautiful uh, background landscape. Uh, and uh, um, this is like a three-legged creature and me, and we are the best friends ever. So I have worked with uh, consulting assignments uh, so, so much. And these, these are, uh, being a surveyor, you have so many wonderful memories of beautiful places, challenges, opportunities everywhere you go. So uh, one of the uh, images that you can see uh, below is uh, the height of, new height of Mount Everest that is uh, increased by 86 centimeters. This is a take home message for you surveyors, uh, we as a surveyor. So we just um, remeasure the height of tallest peak in the world, Mount Everest, and the new height has increased to 86 centimeters. And we are proud to tell that Nepal uh, employed young surveyors, um, in-house uh, young surveyors to remeasure the height of uh, Mount Everest. And we have successfully done that. And in collaboration with China, we just uh, announced the new height of uh, Mount Everest. So if this is the opportunity for young surveyors to come in and uh, measure other high, higher peaks that is um, present in Nepal. Okay. So uh, that is uh, uh, my part of, of my bio, and now I will move on to next slide. So let's see how uh, is the serving uh, conditions in Nepal. Uh, this uh, slide paints a picture of how we do uh, serving in Nepal. So it is both uh, analog and digital. So in Nepal, if you see uh, the landscape, there is a difficult topography that present challenges uh, to the surveyors. And we have challenges in terms of technologies as well, because we don't have like uh, rich resources. So we make uh, use of available resources, whatever you have. If you see the picture on the left, uh, there is uh, a cart of a bullock cart. And we are just, uh, the team of surveyors are going to the field. Uh, we don't have the vehicle because the vehicle was busted. Uh, you can see the Toyota, a vehicle in the background was not working. So we just uh, took a villager's cart and then we uh, went to the field. This is how uh, we work. Uh, even in, uh, the, if, the, if the situations are adverse, we try to make the use of local resources. That is what serving is about. And also uh, you can see in the, uh, in, in another picture is like uh, the plane table survey. This is uh, the traditional method that is also being um, used uh, uh, currently in Nepal, apart from uh, using the modern machines like uh, total stations and others. So this is how, uh, this is just a brief uh, introduction about how we serve, we as a service to our job in Nepal. Okay, so talking about my VCSP activity, um, I was uh, a voluntary surveyor in Philippines, uh, um, stationed at Montelupa, uh, stationed at uh, like Manila and uh, uh, it was a um, prison city and uh, uh, there was a brilliant uh, group of uh, team called Tampe that was the local organization that there and my uh, talking about my activities there uh, I was tasked with uh, analyzing the database issues and find workaround in smoothing the workflow and then preparing of preparation of the compiling maps of the mapped informal settlements and then work on the mobile platform uh, for the households uh, survey and integrate it to the STDM platform and then understand the informal uh, tenure and mapping. So this was uh, broadly uh, all the activities that I was touched around and uh, uh, talking about local organization there, uh, it was uh, called Tampe and uh, this is the group of young people who were um, in, in the organization there and who supported me, who worked with me and uh, like uh, we just shared our experiences. This is me giving presentation over there about my activities and my interest to uh, the group of groups there. And those staffs are very cooperative and really brilliant people, young people, and uh, they uh, are 
doing really well in Philippines. And this is also one of the, I think, target countries of GLTN, uh, in which uh, the SDM is being implemented and used. And, uh, uh, and there the SDM is being implemented at a community level. So um, I think um, uh, in future, there will be uh, young service and voluntary service who make a chance to go over there. It is a brilliant place, uh, a place to uh, have a learning experience. So the office works uh, that I executed over there was primarily I um, uh, played around with the Geo ODK platform. I know uh, the pre uh, workshop MOOC uh, also uh, has uh, this component. So most of us, uh, must have experienced how to use this platform and then integrate it to, to, to SCDM. It is a brilliant tool, open source tool. So go give it a, um, a practice uh, uh, with this tool, play around and uh, see uh, what you can learn from this. And also I encourage you to, um, to use it actually in your uh, professional life. And uh, even, um, uh, even if you are using it for your interest, and uh, for the research purpose, this is a brilliant platform. So uh, I was um, trying to study how to use the Geo ODK platform to actually collect the data because the data was being collected uh, manually in the paper form and I wanted to uh, automate it to the use of mobile app. And now even um, Kedasta uh, is coming up with Survey123 app. So this is being streamlined and developed day after day. Okay, so apart from uh, the professional and uh, apart from the works, it was more about exotic experience. This is uh, when you uh, volunteer uh, in the organizations like FIG, Young Survey, you get to explore new places and uh, have uh, exotic experiences. This is uh, me uh, in one of the uh, parks uh, there in uh, Philippines. And then there was an aquatic park and this is at the port. And there were, well, it was really beautiful to explore the places. And young service activity and BCSP is also about meeting young surveyors in the foreign land. So I got an opportunity to meet other young surveyors in the Philippines. And in the left, you can see we are having a good time, a quality time with the other young surveyors. And in the right is one of the uh, young surveyors uh, there and he just uh, helped me uh, and uh, we, we just had a really good time at the beach. So some of the reflections, um, working in the team from different culture, dialectic profession is interesting. Really, if you, uh, if you go, uh, if you work as a volunteer in a foreign land and a new place, you get to learn about the new culture, new experiences, new social settings. And there you need, uh, you, actually get chance to use your quality of uh, uh, as a surveyor and as a human to interact uh, uh, with them. So it is the voluntary survey is not only technically about just collecting the data, it is also about how you intermix with the people, how you get the real data uh, out of the place and the culture. So this is more about uh, uh, being a community being, uh, intermixing with the community and then studying the land tenure uh, situations was enriching and then open use of open source tool uh, that young surveyors uh, should be using, testing and upgrading. And also the potential of young surveyors need mentorship and support to grow. And I, I'm sure Kadasta, GLTN, Young Habitat, there are so many organizations, phenomenal organizations uh, coming in and supporting our young service activities. That is an opportunity uh, to us in terms of uh, uh, partnership and uh, growing and as a mentees, uh, this is going to help us certainly. So this is all for, for my part and uh, thank you very much. Uh, and this has been a phenomenal experience from my side. And I guess uh, all of you, more than 125 people who have joined uh, joined here, Young Surveys, you will obviously, and you will certainly get opportunities uh, and you'll make out the best of it. Thank you very much. Over to you, Roshni. Thank you very much, Chandan. Now we have our last VCS, Adama Sa. Welcome, Adama. Hello. Uh, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to share my screen to make my presentation.
Okay. Can you have it? Yes. Would you mind going into presenter mode, please? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Um, if yeah. you could just present. Yeah. Okay, my name, uh, my name is Adam Asar. I'm a survey engineer. Sorry, Adamo, and, uh, would you mind going into presenter mode so we can see the whole slide as, a, as, as the big screen? To the big it should screen? Be the, it should be the big yellow button on the top right or the white button next do, to it. Do you have it? Uh, no, it should be the button at the top of your screen. If you go to the top of the screen to the right. Yes. No. Uh, keep on going to the right. And it's that little, uh, it's the white button next to the big yellow button. If you keep on going to the right. Yes. Yep. If you continue to okay. the right, okay. it's, it's right next to your icon in the top right of your screen. Or if you would like, if you're already presenting and it's presenting on a different screen, you might need to stop sharing and reshare. Mm. Okay. Yes. You have it right now. So I think it's, it's either that yellow button or the white button next to it. Oh, no, no, it's the white button next to the yellow button. You should be able to just click on the grey space behind that text box. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Share okay. screen here? Yep, if you want to try sharing screen again, that should be great. Okay. Okay, so if you um, maximize your window. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Yeah, and then you click the, the blue cancel button. Cool. Yep, so we can see your screen. So if you click the blue cancel button. The blue cancel button. Mm -hmm. Terminate. Yeah. Yep, that's it, Terminate. yes. Yes. You can see and it now? And then if you click that white button right next to the yellow button, that's it, yes. That's good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, my name is Adam Asar. I'm a young survey engineer. And uh, I'm uh, presently the head office of the Cadastro Office of Tambacunda in Senegal. Uh, in the same time, I am also the coordinator of the Francophone Young Surveyors Network. And uh, I'm a mediator also in the Mediator Bain Body International. And uh, as Tandy say, I get my first ECDM trainees in 2013 in Nigeria, in Abuja. And in 2017, I did my first program VCSP in uh, DRC in the Republic Democratic of Congo. In the Democratic Republic of Congo. So I would like today to, to make some advice to the future VCSP, to, to the future VC, v, VS, VCS, to the future VCS. So as you can see in the agenda, I'm gonna talk about volunteering, VCSP, tools of volunteer, uh, media skill needed to be a volunteer and the different steps and goals. Okay. Uh, for the future VCS, volunteering is, uh, uh, I mean, offering his services without education. It is to take, I mean, freely chosen decision to help other people. Uh, to be a volunteer, you can do it nationally or internationally. So you have to require some skills about, uh, I, I mean, mediation. 
the most important thing for me, for my background, for my experience, is no technician aspects, no. It is how to have good contact with the local community where you are going to have your project. To be, why, why, why to be a volunteer? For me, to be a volunteer is to sharing your skills. Sharing skill is not to give, but also to receive a skill from others. You are getting and building new skills. Why? When you are doing volunteering, you are doing with it. And uh, as every volunteer services, VCSP also can give you, can open many doors to you, can open many doors. And you could have many contact in this program. You can obtain many contact and many new skills to, 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 to the VCSP program. Why to do VCSP? Land today is, a, is the cause of many problems in the world. Why you did it well, you are going to give peace by securing people. By securing them, how? To give them a security on the land they are using, to help communities as both academician or administrative. Uh, to resume, for me, volunteering is self-giving for the society. Volunteering is self-giving for the society. Now let's come in the VCSP. VCSP are all volunteering. Is a volunteering. Who are the actor, young surveyors? What are we going to do? We are going to do some work based on land. You can, if I say land, it's going to be maybe land administration, geomatic, topography, but all you are going to do in your survey is based on land. For what? For to give people tenure security, to give people land rights, to give people land information system, good land information system, if I can say, to good people, to give people good urban planning, and, and at the end, to give people best living best living for people so this uh, volunteering is very important because you are an actor to help society in need what are the tools of the volunteer you have a uh, different tool you can use uh, the first of all you have technical tools as survey as geomedician in the field, in the little experience I get in DRC, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, you, you can use technical tools like hand GPS to collect data, to collect the data in the field. After collecting data, you can also have total station. These technical tools are equipment, are equipment that you are going to use in your field to do your work. Uh, secondly, you have data. Before any survey or any land administration's project you have to to, to to have what we call field data field data can be images can be uh, can be could be images from uh, satellite images can be made by photogrammetric image etc and the, search, uh, the software at the field in your program you are going to use some software yeah, software i mean like stdm or like others uh, uh, software you're going to use to to build to build your your database to build your system your information system your land information system okay as a, as a volunteer the most important thing you could have is not a technician, your, your, your technician background, but your mediation or your social skills. Uh, before any project, you have to know the society where you are going to work. You have to be in good contact, have good relations. with the society where you're going to work. As if there are a lot of parties, it's parties, they, they culture, I mean, they, they vision of life, you have to know, you have to, to understand them. And also, as a volunteer, you should have a good listening, a good listening. Do not go, do not go 
to say I'm the I'm, I'm the I'm the expert. No, have good listening. Listen to people where you are working. Above all, if you are an internationally, explain. Take your time. Take a, take your time to explain your project to the community. Uh, I can say why I was in DRC Republic of Congo in the in 2017. The first thing I do was to visit all authorities to visit customer authorities, to, to visit administrator authorities, to visit uh, academician authorities, to explain them why I'm here in DRC, what I'm going to do in DRC, and what the result of my work uh, will, will give us, will give you in the future. Meet all parties before any work and make a good sensibilization, make a good sensibilization. It's going to help you in your field work. The sensibilization will help VCS in your field work. Because if you have a lack of sensibilization, you can go at field and to do nothing. And to do nothing. So you have to do before anything a good sensibilization in the areas where you're working, in the zone where you're working. Try to destroy all barrier between you and the society be in contact with them as you are a citizen of this locality as you are a global part in this community or in the end you have to focus on your goal why you are starting your project and what you're expecting in the end of your project okay as a, as a volunteer I think some goal you have to have or you have to get with you is uh, to support the community, both academician administrative and uh, land administration office. Uh, make a good mapping to answer the tenure security. Every day after the field work, make make a report it's going to help you report day by day report day by day have a good documentation mapping images feature document go to achieve to regroups all document need to have to better manage your project to better manage your project and as professional the work is going to be like this mapping to answer the security make a good enumeration and digitizing the images we get from remote sensing or photogrammetric. trick planning for the community try to do your best even if after you you you, you move from the project people can do themselves what you learn them support the process of participatory mapping Classify the different participants. This is very important for a, a volunteer. In a group of person, the level are not the same. The level are not the same. Try to make a classification for them to understand what you are going to do because the understanding is not the same for all of them. Before they start any work, build a work plan for the whole project, what you are going to do every day is the project is 30 days make a work plan for the whole project and don't forget to report day by day and after the global work finish you have to make a publication for the work you have done thank you so much merci beaucoup jerry jeff fantastic thank you so much adama that was amazing I'd now like to hand over to my colleague, Angela. I, I think my French tongue did not disturb you. <laughs> no, it was great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>